We're here at the art school today with Paul, Paul Kiaskiu. Absolutely. And he's going to show us some of the treasures that you can find at the art school if you look very carefully. What's first? Well, I thought we'd introduce you to the famous drinks cabinet. Now this, this was a little, um, well not so little actually, but this was from my father's seafaring days. Um, he was at sea for 40 odd years, he was a master mariner, um, sea captain, and ironically, like most things in Liverpool, we, you know, we were brought by the sea and he spent most of his life bringing back uh, beef from Argentina, New Zealand lamb, apples from Washington, whatever, and now I'm the guy saying buy local, go to your farm shop, buy, you know, all the, so you can see how it's all come full circle. So it's not like EasyJet where you've got to pay for, the, you know, <laughs> you can just basically no. take a big whopping weight of cargo. <laughs> Well, I think the skipper decided that they were in India. This is a, it was a, um, it was actually a ship's carpenter who, who made this. Um, and, and this is your classic sort of James Bond. As you yeah. can see, we'll, we'll, we'll fold it together, but the drinks disappear like that. But then of course, when you have a party. Yeah, so yes mother, so, yeah. <laughs> to see here. <laughs> exactly, yeah. so you just lift those up. And then of course, for your after dinner, there we go. Ready for everybody to have a nice little malt whiskey or a, or a cognac or whatever you want. So it's, uh, I suppose that th this room is all about, I didn't want this to be a commercial space. I wanted to, people to feel like you're dining with friends. So all the things in this room are very personal to me and my family and travels and they all have little stories and little meanings behind them. So while we're in the comfort of the private dining room at the art school, we can also do a bit of traveling, can't we? We can do quite a lot of travelling, yes. I mean, another one of our little artefacts here is the is the Dubai coffee pot or the Arabic coffee pot. Um, and this kind of symbolises for me um, the first sort of big trip that the fam my family made. So at age 11, my dad had been posted out to Dubai to launch the container port. Um, and so I was at, you know, getting my little porky trotters off to Dubai at the age of 11 to go to school there. And I can still remember going to the, the souks, which is where this comes from, and, and seeing the first spice market, the first sort of really unusual fish market, and seeing, you know, it was just like Aladdin's cave to me. It's quite funny, like the, the rubbing of Aladdin's uh, pot. And, and I always remember my mum buying this while we were in there. Um, and I was off rummaging around the sort of spice market, looking at the, the turmeric and the coriander, the garam masala, the chilies, whatever it was and she was a bit of a shopaholic so this always symbolizes Dubai for me and um, and they do you know they make coffee in that and it's it's pretty good pourer um, so yeah it, it, it's a very sort of symbolic thing for me and it reminds me uh, of those early days of food culture and I can't help noticing just over your shoulder there's a bit of a fancy certificate yes from well, Bordeaux indeed yes well as you can tell vigorous tasting has taken place in this uh, temple-like body. Very important, quality <laughs> control. Um, and for me, you know, when we're developing menus or developing dishes, it's very important that we select the right beverage to go with that. Uh, and I think in a tasting menu scenario, what it does, you put the two together and it elevates the whole thing, maybe two or three levels. And you know when you've got that perfect match. And of course, became obsessed with wine maybe 20 years ago and, and been developing that ever since. And then three years ago, we were lucky enough to get the Bordeaux Wine Festival to come to Liverpool. Um, so we're one of only four other cities in the world because Bordeaux wine used to come here in barrel and then be bottled in, uh, in Liverpool. Um, but the fact that you know Bordeaux chose Liverpool three years ago is fantastic. So I became the first UK chef um, to become a, an ambassador for Bordeaux. And um, you know we're working on that to develop the, the gastronomic offer in the northwest, particularly in this city. Here we are in the lantern room, which is the main dining room of the art school. And if you come and eat in this beautiful airy space, in the corner, you might notice this. Why have you got a gong <laughs> in your restaurant? I know, it's quite unusual, isn't it? Well, it, it goes back to our family travels, if you like. So it's a, it's a, it's a sort of Askew family trophy that came back from Singapore. Um, and my dad used to, so sort of if he had dinner parties or he had people around at the house, he used to think it was hilarious that when dinner was ready to be served that he would bang the gong and everybody would stop drinking and, and come in really. I suppose that's where I got the, the obsession for good hospitality and the mine host approach to everything because typical old sea dog, as you can imagine, 
uh, it was quite a lively affair when they had people around. So, uh, so we, we use it for when we have an exclusive use in the restaurant. People are in the bar and we've gone them in for dinner. So, so it is used it still? It does get used, yes, we have a little go. Go on then. So, dinner is served. And what would an art school be without art? So um, we've got this fantastic mural. Um, do you want to talk us through this? Yeah, so this, obviously when we knew what the history of the building was and the fine art faculty of John Moores University, it was very important to me that we commissioned some pieces of art. Um, so this was an artist called Matt Williams who has a business called Monsieur Mural. He goes all up and down the UK. The, the lovely story is that he worked for me uh, at, the, at my previous place, which was the carriage works over the road and he was doing his degree while he was working for us as a bartender and then when he found out that I was redeveloping the art school as in John Moore's University Art School he said oh my god that's where I did my fine art degree so he actually studied in this room so it became very apparent that we needed to commission Matt to do uh, this piece which was called New Leaf so for me it was a new leaf turning over um, from there to here but for, for us the, the, the foliage is all herbs it's all edible so that the, it's it's again goes back to this ingredients thing so you've got everything from nasturtium in there you've got um, the allium family in there you've got rosemary in there uh, and then you've got the little flower we use edible flowers quite a lot in the summertime as well but then you've got the little golden icons which are all based on the black and whites that he did because he also developed this logo I gave him a list of ingredients that I wanted him to draw and they became the sort of the crown jewels of the chef. So, so the new leaf is actually the foliage, but it's also the little ingredients and the little things that are important to me. So the chef's hat, the Liverpool Bay sea bass, the, the little partridge there, or, or the bottle of wine. And then upstairs you've got the John Dory, the little pig, of course. And in the center is the, the logo, the, the, the Trinity of the art school so but that's your nickname Porky that's it well like that, that comes from way back when I was about 11 I started playing rugby um, which I did play quite a lot till I was about 30 um, and my shape sort of dictated that so uh, yeah the, the culinary connection between pork and, and askew is uh, is renowned I suppose so that's the nickname yeah. brilliant now you know so we're here in the wine cellar downstairs and uh, would you like to introduce me to this lovely lady? Absolutely, this is our wonderful champagne lady um, who was commissioned uh, as a piece of art by Matt Williams, the Monsieur Mural as we call him, who uh, did the leaf that you've already seen upstairs and this was commissioned about two and a half years ago. It's completely different isn't it? It is, it's a very different style but she is the symbol of the art school sellers. Nice to meet you. Here we are in the tasting room which is quite a special place. And if you want to just talk us through these very special fridges that you've I got do, here. I do. Well, as you can imagine, the tasting room is one of my favourite places. <laughs> being, being the porky askew that I am. It's fast becoming mine. Yes, yeah, exactly. But these fridges were, were put in um, when, we, when we did this two and a half years ago. And it was done very specifically because, as you can see, the way that the champagne bottles are stored is the optimum angle in which champagne should be stored from a even in the cellars, uh, in the chateaus, that, that, that they're in the, at that angle and they're turned by hand or well, now it's done by machine. But, but as far as storage in the bottle, this is the optimum way to keep them. Um, and we were the first ones in the UK to bring them over from Italy and have them designed in this way. As impressive as the fridges are, yes. uh, just talk us through why there's only one variety of champagne in here. Well, we, we this is I mean this is a, a fine dining restaurant with a with a champagne bar, and we do sell lots of different champagnes. But when when I first was choosing the house champagne for the art school six years ago now, I did a number of different tastings, as you can imagine, uh, and without failure, I did I tasted five wines from Charles Heidsick, and every one of them made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, and I was just going wow this is it and, I, and at the time to be fair they weren't a particularly well-known brand or you know it, it wasn't like Louis Roder or Paul Roger or something like this 
they were, they were sort of underdogs, and I always liked that as well. I like to prove a point about things. And to me, it was all, it wasn't about the label on the bottle, it was about the juice of the bottle. And every one I tasted was second to none. And, and we've had a relationship with them now for six years, and we're now the, um, the ambassadors in the North of England for Charles Hyde, same thing.